Hey, this is Mr. Dang, and for today's Friday Functions video, I'll be showing you how you could save multiple records at a time into your data sources. This is something I tried to do very early on in Power Apps, and now I'll be sharing it with you. I'll start by giving you some background information on the use case that you'll see inside this video. This is a screenshot of an app for gathering formative assessment data. So as a teacher, you might get, uh, perform a whiteboard check and you need a way to record how's a student actually performing in there. Are they proficient? Are they advanced? Do they need some support? This is only going to be one of the resources that you might refer to to find out how's a student doing. And for our purposes, I'm going to be using this to highlight how you could save multiple records at a time. So the way this app works is when I select a student, I'm going to be providing, I'm going to be adding them to a collection of students who are selected. In other words, the students who have been assessed. And as I select the student, I'm also selecting uh, a, a rating for them uh, on their proficiency. When they're selected, they have some conditional formatting and they have this purple color on them. I don't want to save that data right away. Uh, I want to wait until all of the students that I've selected have a rating, uh, whoever's, whoever's present in the classroom has a rating. And then all the way at the end, I'll be clicking the, uh, the floppy disk icon to save all that information all at once, rather than doing it as I go along. This way, it's, it keeps all the writing at when I want the, the writing to the data source to be done, and I don't have any performance issues throughout, uh, throughout, the, throughout using the app. Now, before I go into the app, let me show you the roadmap of the kind of expressions that we're going to be working towards. The big idea is, is that we're going to be using the collect function. And normally, you think of collect as, as a function that saves data locally to the, to the instance of the app. We're actually going to be using it to save data back to the connected data source. This might be different from what you're used to. In order to get there, I'm backwards planning here, in order to get there, I'm going to need to have a local collection. And this local collection is going to have the exact same schema, the exact same columns as, as the original connected data source. So it needs to have the schema. To give it the schema, I'm going to be using the defaults function. This gives me the size, shape, columns of a, of a blank record or a blank row inside the connect data source. Um, and once I figure out the schema, I can make a local collection, and then that local collection can be collected to the connected data source. Now that we're inside Power Apps, let's work through that first requirement. I want to figure out the schema of the connected data source so I can use it in a local collection. A good place to declare things like that is the onVisible property of the screen. Here I'll be typing in clear collect. Uh, I'm, I'll be calling this local collection records to save. Keeping it simple for us so that we can follow along, I'll be using the defaults function. What the defaults function does is it brings back a blank record with all of the columns from the table that I put inside. Now, I actually don't want that black blank record, so what I'll do next is clear that collection that's called records to save. So now I have all of the schema, none of the data. Okay. I'm going to use that to my advantage. My next step is to create a local collection, build on that local collection, uh, records that have all of the same columns, but preparing all of the data that I want to save locally. So I'll do that at the rating level. This rating control, whenever I select it in the on select property, I want it to save a record to that collection. So I'll collect 
records to save. And below that, I'll start with that schema. Now, I happen to remember my columns. Created on date time. I'll set that equal to now. My next column is the score. I'll set that equal to this rating dot value. Next, student ID. It's going to be the respective student's record. So I'll say this item dot record ID. And a Boolean value that I'm, I'm going to be calling viewed, it's going to be set to false. So uh, these records will ring true later in another part of the app. Oh, one mistake that I've made. Uh, the rating in this case is called rating one. Okay, so I have the basic schema that I'm looking for, and any of the fields that I that I that are not present right now, like all the system fields, uh, they will be automatically populated, or they'll simply be null. So, because I used the defaults property earlier, I'm still getting uh, the schema for those other other columns that might not appear here. Okay. Now, before I move on, I want to give some feedback to the user of this app that they have collected this person to the collection. I've set up some conditional formatting here for the gallery overall and the template fill property. I have specified that if this record, I, the record of this student is in that collection that's called records to save, student ID column for that, give it uh, this this color, otherwise keep it transparent. Okay, let me populate a few of these just so that you have a better idea of, of what I'm talking about here. I'm selecting three students. So it has that fill if they're currently selected. Next, what I'll have to do is use a condition that if this student is already inside this collection, ready to be saved, and I decide that I want to click their name again, I want to have the behavior of removing them from the collection. So I'll use that same condition as I did for the conditional formatting. If this item.record ID is exactly exact in records to save dot student ID. So if they're already inside that collection, remove them, remove them from the records to save collection. And here I'm going to be doing a lookup. Look up the record in records to save where the student ID is equal to this item dot record ID. So in other words, I'm matching up uh, the, the, the existing record if it exists and I'll remove it if it's already in there. Otherwise, I'll make a new record with collect. Let me apply a little bit of formatting. So my local collection is ready. I just have one final easy step in this button, at the, this icon that I've set up at the top, the floppy disk icon. I want to save all that. This is the easiest part. It's just one line. I'll collect to my, uh, my connected data source. This one is in SQL. And I'll just specify the name of that collection, records to save. That's it. Because this collection, records to save, has the exact same schema as the connected data source, it'll just all fit in there. I might want to do one more step just to clean things up, but I, I could do this somewhere else as well. I'll just clear that record, uh, that, that collection called records to save. That's it. So you can save multiple records using collect as long as all of those, uh, as long as that local collection has the same schema as the connected data source. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting Power Apps, please subscribe.